Hello and welcome. My name is ESG and I'm joined today by Pigeon and uh, we're going to talk about the new Arms Against Tyranny DLC that's coming for Hearts of Iron 4 fairly shortly here. You'll be getting this video um, at around the time that the DLC drops. So go ahead and look out for that on the Steam page and that's Arms Against Tyranny. It's going to cover the Nordic nations, uh, which will be Finland, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Iceland. So those countries are getting updates. There's a lot to talk about here. Pigeon, go ahead and say hi. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Going great. Thank you for helping me out with all the technical stuff here. So uh, you excited about the new DLC? Yeah, there's uh, there's some changes that, uh, you know, I'm interested in. So uh, I haven't really got much time to play it, but yeah, there's a, uh, you know, it should be pretty good. This is way before the, the release, about a week before. So we just got the beta. And what we're covering here is mainly images of the beta. So mm -hmm. essentially, if there's any changes, I'm sorry. I don't think that they're going to make major changes in a week, though. But we are sending bug fixes to Paradox to help improve the game as we play. As we make videos, we do bug fixes and things like that. So it's kind of interesting. We're going to start this off by going over combat width. Yes. And the first thing that I'm going to show you here is the new combat widths. And just to kind of give you a summary here, plains, hills, and deserts went from set uh, from 90 to 70. City combat widths will now be 80 plus 40. For forest and jungles, it's going to be 60 plus 30. Mountains go from 50 combat width with an additional 25 if you attack from a separate area. So you can really pile a lot into urban areas. It's kind of interesting there. Any thoughts on the new combat width system? Um, I think it might be a little bit easier to to like think about. Um, I sent you a message of the old train types. The older numbers were a little bit harder to to think about because they weren't always uh, a, like a simple number. And then then like half of that, if that makes any sense. So like forest jungles were 84, but half of that was 42. But with mountains, it was 75 and then 25 reinforce. And then urban tiles were 96 with 32 reinforce. What main differences do you do you see with uh, yeah, the so combat widths? The, new, the newer numbers are kind of like if they do continue on with these ones here, the ones that we're seeing in the, the, the early access test, if they continue with those ones, they're a lot easier for people to think about. So like previously, like with a forest tile or jungle tile, it was like 84 and then you would do half of that for 42. Uh, but like you would have things like the urban tiles, they would be 96, but they would reinforce with not half of 96, but rather like a third. So like th that would be 32. And the same thing with mountains, they were they were a third as well. So you couldn't just be like, oh, this is the number, then it's going to be half of that. Whereas I think this the newer system might be a little bit easier, like in terms of like brain power. Um, but yeah, the I, in the testing though, I, I was noticing that we were getting a lot more the the combat uh, it, when you exceeded your combat width, the the negative modifier was a lot higher. Um, so like I did look a little bit into the code. There's like a few different things that touch it. So I'm not entirely sure how the the equation works uh, in terms of like calculating that. But I did notice that when you do exceed the combat width, it's a bit more of a penalty where. Previously, like the last couple of years, I've just been telling people, like, honestly, don't worry too much about combat with. Just like if you're defending, like just pick something close to 20, you're probably fine. Um, but now I don't know. I don't know if I'm, that advice still still stands. Uh, if anything, we might want to try to find a magic number for for defense and something good for for tanks. And yeah, well, I've got a few suggestions here and by mm -hmm. no means is this exhaustive, but I've got an infantry template that I want to show you as well okay. as a tank template here. Mainly what you're seeing with the combat wits was if you were over the combat width, that's when you started seeing the, the penalty stack yeah. in, right? Yeah. So when you have too many units on the tile uh, or attacking into the tile, sometimes they reinforce with just a bit more than the width. When you do that, you get the you get the negative modifier on all of, all the divisions that are in the battle, uh, currently fighting on your side. So, it's not a good thing to have. It, it probably matters a little bit more for defense because if you're attacking into something with a big unit, you can kind of think like, okay, this is a 90 width tile, and I've got like two 40 widths. Well, I'm not going to put a third 40 width in, right? So, or you could think I've got 120 width, so those 40 widths will fit, but I'm not going to do like you know, 
uh, some sort of fraction that's actually going to push me into that combat with. So you can kind of like the 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 attacking side's a little bit easier to honestly, like to think about, but when you're holding like a mass mass assault build, right, where you've got a lot of units where you're stacking just as as many as you can into the tile, and you're just trying to like reinforce and keep the uh, the attacker from pushing you off that tile. Uh, in those cases, the number like getting that perfect you know divisible number might matter a lot more so essentially what we need to do here is on defense worry about like not overstacking mm -hmm. um, and then offense is pretty easy because you're usually microing tanks in a lot of different scenarios so you could just choose to micro those however you like yeah and i mean like this has sort of been the case like always like since we've had hoi four and uh, so, you know, like previously, like before No Step Back, we always had like the, the meta of 10, 20, 40, because if you didn't hit those numbers, like you would get that that, that modifier. So, uh, and then even since then, like it's always been whatever your mod is, you want to make sure you know the the combat width of the tiles and like build for it. So, um, so yeah. going, going back to this, um, thinking about tank attacking with tanks so we have a yeah. 70 combat width here and 35 is half of 70 and then you have yep. an additional attack of 35 that kind of spells out to me your main attack would be two tanks of 35 combat width and yep. perhaps you could take a third from another Four. direction and um, that might be a strategy there uh, we haven't tested this out though so this is all speculation yeah. at this point so like in in that case layer with like the plains or desert or hills in this version like yeah like a 35 width might be your best bet for vanilla hearts of iron 4 like just because you're like you know if you're adding an extra direction that's just an extra tank right so there's not really much brain power thinking about that so and you can think of like where you're fighting like most of your tank battles are going to be on plains or desert right like so you know it's it's those naughty forests and marshes and you know, obviously mountains we have to worry about now. <laughs> yeah, uh, and most of the tank combat's on Barbarossa Friend anyway, so it's like, yeah. especially in multiplayer. Um, I think what I would do is probably come up with uh, two sets of tanks, and then if I need to attack with that third, because I was having trouble, just hit S, that'll divide whatever you hover over in, two, in half, and then just attack from that direction. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that would be quite easy to do. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at my plains, hills, and desert tank, which is where I sure. use my tanks. I don't really use them anywhere else except for occasionally a forest uh, where the 35 combat width is not going to work as great. But here it is. I cut off the stats because um, the I'm stats are all, they're all going to be different based on how you build your tank. So the stat, just look at this right here. This is my best guess as to tank template, stack whatever else you want in terms of the support companies. Bear in mind, the support companies will now have a greater weight to them. And the bottom of the battalion columns here is locked by your doctrine, correct? Yeah, so you need to get down to a certain one on each of the doctrines. It really depends on which way you go. So it, it does tell you like in game where if you hover over it, it says, hey, you need to get to this level to unlock these ones here. So, so I mean, are you really going to really hit those that extra line that often? I don't know how much that's, you know, really going to have much of an impact. So, I, OK, so while you had that up there, I did notice that you don't you only filled out three of your support companies. Do you not like to fill them all out or? No, I'm just leaving that up for options. Okay. It looks yeah. like the last one is locked. I, you know, I typically just put in Logi and perhaps Venus? Field Hospital later. Okay, yeah. Going to be a lot of ways to grind XP uh, with this new DLC. So there's going to be a lot of ways to get to the bottom here through your doctrine. Yeah. So the next template that I'd like to share with you, Pigeon, is the Universal Infantry template. Uh, we kind of talked yeah. about this a bit. That 17 combat width might be good for every man's infantry. What do you think? Yeah, last night we, we did talk a little bit about this. I think the number might actually be 15 sent you a, a spreadsheet that I was make I made like earlier today uh, before before work. Uh, I was noticing that 17 is not a particularly good number for some of the the other ones. I don't know. I think that this is going to come down like I think the community is going to come through and, and look at everything and we'll probably have a completely different number. My guess would be 15 might actually be the better number. It's not 21. I can tell you that it's not 21. <laughs> so if the developers don't change the the, the current numbers that we're seeing in early access, there's going to be a shakeup of the, the combat with meta for sure. Well, that's interesting because AI Germany in my Swedish game today had 21 combat with. So, <laughs> so AI is going to be a pushover. <laughs> 
So yeah. the 15 like kind of works better in like, uh, I don't know if you can open this, the spreadsheet and, and, and I can show you how it works a little bit. You can see here, like the, I, I just have them listed out so that I can change them. If these numbers change in the future, the way that it works is it, it just goes through and, and takes this number here and we'll put in like, uh, the most, uh, divisions without the modifier. Uh, and so like the mod is like the remainder if you're dividing the, the numbers. And so ideally you want this number to be very low. So you can see at 41 combat width, you're getting a lot of really bad modifiers. So if you're going over, not all of these will fit in. Like I don't think a 38 width or 38, like a 41 would fit if there's only 38 remaining. But ideally you want to hit a, a situation where it's zero, where you have a zero remainder or something very low. And I was noticing, so um, let's look at 17. You can see here for cities, they're pretty good. Planes, they're pretty good too. Uh, and planes just saw like on the one. So that's kind of like what we were originally thinking, like, cause it was half of 35, like what's the closest number. Um, but if you actually look, if I switch this to 15, you can see there's a lot of these tiles where it's essentially in a situation where you're getting attacked, you're, you're, you're actually dividing quite a bit better into them. And it actually works for force too forest and jungle. You're sitting there, deserts, plains, hills, forest, city, uh, being attacked from two spots, reinforced is, is pretty good. Uh, and then in situations where it's not really good, like on mountain tiles, you're only exceeding by five. So you're not going to hit that full negative 20 or negative 33, whatever the actual modifier ends up being. And even when you're fighting, a lot of the times you're not actually fighting against like a, a, on a plains tile where there's only one. And if it's over, if it's in a situation where it's reinforced, you're actually, you know, you can fit eight divisions into a combat and have no modifier, like no uh, debuff. So 15 would be really strong in the cities, in forest, plains. C cities, forest, plains, jungles, even in a mountain that's reinforced once, as long as it's not being attacked from one angle, that mountain. And if you're in a mountain, you're probably going to use mountaineers. So yeah, um, yeah. What, what would that combat with be? Maybe a 14? I think, I think the mountaineer is going to be 25, right? Because you can get the most in and, you know, or if you're attacking into a mountain, you're probably going to want the as much width in as possible. Of course, this is not good for anything else, but it's good, really good for mountains. But yeah, I was going through the other numbers and it's like 16 doesn't work. We've seen 17, so 18 doesn't work. 19, even 20 is not super great. I mean, it's okay for cities and four but nothing else really let's check out 21 yeah, 20, yeah 21's, 21's right here oh it's right there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's terrible 21 yeah no it's awful. not that's what i was saying it is not good at all it's, it's good for like sometimes it hits the the number but if a plane tile is reinforced twice it does it doesn't work either um not that i'm showing it here but and then as you go up it's less and less likely i mean you got one there at 24 but but as a basic rule of thumb, this works out. And that's what most players use, because if you're a newer player, if you try to micro your combat widths in different terrain types, it becomes a nightmare. The game becomes so tedious. almost yeah. in, unplayable unless you're pause yeah. microing every two seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Like the only places where I can think that you might want to do it be like on your ports in multiplayer. But like even that, that's like maybe you're a minor power and you're doing DDoS ball or something. But you, you, you kind of want a number that you can set and forget and Honestly, 15 is pretty good. Yeah, and the ports uh, with special forces now, amphibious landings should be a lot easier. So you might want to yeah. micro it, particularly because those ports tiles you usually just like put something there and then forget about it till you, you get landed on. That is one area where you could change up an infantry combat width and uh, succeed fairly well. Yeah, 10 width is actually pretty good too. Maybe, <laughs> you know, your 10 widths are... An okay thing to do. But yeah, it was like 10 and 15 were the, the ones that I found that were the best for defense, at least. Okay, so that is summary of the combat wits there. Obviously, a work yeah. in progress. The MIO screen is what we're going to go over next. So okay. military industrial organizations. And let me tell you, they are going to be all over this game now because particularly the majors have like four MIOs in every category. So you have Navy, you also have tank, and then you have plane. So you're yep. going to be seeing these a lot when you play Hearts, Hearts of Iron 4, unless you just completely ignore them. Yeah, and so it's only a DLC thing, too. So people don't have the DLC. It's just going to be really weird because you're going to watch a lot of YouTubers playing with it. And like you said, there there's multiple for each category. It's not just one category. So you have like, you'll have your, like your CAS MIO. You'll have your fighter MIO. You'll have like a naval bomber MIO, uh, you know. It's crazy. <laughs> like It looked to me like they took the ones that were there, added yeah. some more on top of that. And then gave them all a tree. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, that's what they did. They gave them all like their own specialized tree. So it's like, what's the best? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that answer for anyone right now. Dude, it would take it would be extremely time consuming, and we're just trying to figure out how to yeah. play countries here. Yeah. So up on the screen, uh, what we can see here is you get trait points. From yep. what I gather, you get these points through your focus tree. You could get paid out, and then those go up. It's it's whether it's when you use it. So you can assign them to production lines. So if you're making guns, you can assign a design or like a an MIO to that gun line, and as it's producing guns, you'll get ticking there. When you research things like sort of uh, along that's along that line, you can research with the MIO. The MIO gives you a research bonus at the cost of a little bit of PP. So there's going to be a balance there where like early game, like do you actually want to research with them? But then again, do you want your trade points? There's just going to be a ton. There's like a whole new level of the game uh, with this, this system. So as you do that, you will get trade points. And then those trade points, each level, it scales up. So it really depends on which one it is. But like, you know, your first one might be 400. Your next one's 800, then 1200 uh, points. So yeah, and it's 0.1 per day if you use it for research and i'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure if you use it on the actual production line that you're that is building this if that yeah. doesn't get added as well so that would be point two um i haven't tested that out completely but it's I, i'm pretty sure it's point one for each one of the um researches a couple of the playthroughs i did through it was like I had no political power like halfway through the game because I just kept clicking them all. But it yeah. is it is a political power sink, if you will, for yeah. the majors. So like yeah. Germany has all this political power saved up like yeah. mid game. All of a sudden they're going to be coming out with like all these MIOs. So it's yeah. going to be a little crazy. And so I think that's really what it is. Like it's going to be like a bit more of a choice in the beginning. Like, do you want to prioritize this or would you pr prefer to prioritize other things? And then like by the end of like, you know, mid to late game, they'll be great to use. But like what's going to be first, right? Like. Like, are your advisors, do you need that, like, your your army, chief of army first, right? Or your chief of air, you know, stuff like that. So maybe you don't want to use them to research right away. Again, the, the community will come up with uh, good strats and things like that. It's just going to take us all time to get our heads around, like, what's the best thing to do. And I think at this point, I would probably venture to say that it's a mid-game thing like mm -hmm. as war starts because you could always just produce the mio tank or plane or whatever and yeah. then go ahead and convert from stockpile into the mio tagged a yeah. piece of equipment and early on you're worried about your economy so much right so you're pouring all your political power into your economy so yeah. and then you can always fix things on the back end as war starts or war has already begun yeah. see where i think that um there might be exception to that is like with uh your fighter Particularly with uh, people who play like in a multiplayer game, because there's uh, some of your MIOs give you agility bonuses and air attack bonuses. And I know if you had those versus someone who didn't, like you're going to shred them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So I think I think like you like the UK and Germany will probably prioritize the fighter one before the war. So you'll have to be doing it at like at least 37, be putting political power, political power into this. Like, yeah, plus you get the research bonus, right? So the previous, like previously you would get like your air air designer for that plus 15%. But like, if you're not using your MIOs and you're not spending that political power, you're not getting that bonus. So I, I could see some of them being more, more like favored over others. So maybe you, you have a tank build and you want to get really good tanks out early. Like maybe that's what you do first and maybe you don't assign the gun guns like we need the the tens of hundreds of thousands of people playing this all at once for us to get some good data right like no absolutely and it was like two years ago the meta was just get to your plane first or yep. your tank first so you'd be picking up the mios like super early like yeah second third fourth political power buy so it's going to be incredibly important and um you can go down this in different ways so in this particular tree uh there's a choice here in the the left and the right but yes you can pick up the middle as well so you yep. could fill this out quite a bit and make it super stacked yeah and some of them reduce the cost uh of the whatever it is tank plane or whatever so like you can actually get quite a bit more equipment yeah they're very useful they look like they're great bonuses but it comes down to like can can you get them early the that's, that's my only re real concern with them <laughs> the juicy one that i saw was the artillery one on mm. Sweden, at least, you could pick up right away. You could get a soft attack bonus of like 10% or something. Yeah. Um, just dip in there real quick. Add that on there. Sweden even has, we'll get to this later, but a artillery expert. So you're just yeah. stacking bonuses right there. Yeah. And that's like the main thing, right? Like if you can find ways to stack bonuses, like that's pretty much what Way 4 is, right? Like, like any build is just like stacking bonuses and modifiers and 
Yeah, absolutely. And I just wanted to give you guys all like another flavor here. Um, mm. This is what, it, what looks it looks like. like in the research screen. As you can see, there's no MIO for this radio, but you see the other ones have different yeah. uh, MIOs on them. You have an infantry one, a tank one, and an artillery one. And this is yeah. the Swedish MIOs. Yeah, so like everyone there that had the gold border is getting a research bonus. So you're doing it quicker than you were previously. You know, adjusting the balance of the game for sure. And for Sweden, at least, you could go down the left side of the focus tree and mm -hmm. you get the MIOs upgraded even faster, depending yep. on the focus. Yeah. So like not all countries will have that, but, you know, the new ones will. <laughs> um, here is an alert just to show you guys that it will alert you at the top of the screen when an upgrade to the MIO is available. So you're not really going to miss that. It's purple. It stands out pretty easily. Yep. Here is how you add... MIOs in the production screen. This little badge right here, you have to add it to whatever variant. It does get a little tricky when you have all these different variants because you can upgrade it, but then it'll create a variant that you have to put in production. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. So it won't just like with your tanks and that, right? Like you're upgrading them. They won't just automatically put them into production because that could cause some issues too if you wanted to keep that production line for some reason. Yep. Okay, here is a screen that just shows kind of like how you apply the MIO to research. So when you hit mm -hmm. the research button here, uh, you could research without or you could add it here and then it says the 0.1 per day. Yeah, so there's a cost, but you do get a benefit. So it will, I, I don't know what if it's always 15%, but it'll shave off sort of like that amount of time. So you'd be saving like 30, 40 days on this, this uh, artillery. Here is kind of like how you could do it from the plane designer. So essentially this arrow right here, it's going to be hard to see, but it'll turn gold. And that signifies to you that you could upgrade that the MIO was upgraded and you can apply the upgrade that you received. Yep. And then here is a screen showing that the MIO is applied to this yep. artillery piece. I, I like the gold border. I like I like how it looks in your production line. Kind of like it makes them stand out a little bit. I agree. And then what I, you know, I don't know if it's a bug, but what I don't like we'll get to later is the shared focus. The shared mm. focuses, how they look. I thought they were going to get a gold border. Um, okay. You'll see it a bit later, but it's very hard to distinguish it on the uh, the focus tree other yeah. than the fact that they're all grouped together on one side yeah <laughs> okay and last slide here this is where you can upgrade to their latest trait and i believe this is in the mio screen so it's going to show all your variants like say you had a light tank that's old um you could just do the one that you want i have a basic medium tank chassis here you upgrade this and as i said before you have to then add it to your production line it won't do that automatically yeah. Any other thoughts it's, on MIOs? No, I mean, I think a lot of people will be fairly familiar if they've done like uh, tank upgrades, if they've got any of the designers. Like it's it's all sort of like similar to that. And like in, in terms of like converting equipment, you've we've all seen it, right? It's just I know the big questions right now are going to be like, what's the best, right? What's the best? What do I do? Like if I want to get the best tank, how do I get it? Like, you know, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, from what I saw, I haven't seen all the countries, but... I've just been going for the raw bonuses like soft mm -hmm. attack and um, just been hanging my hat on that. Um, some of them, I think, come with debuffs as well. It's, it's going to be interesting. I did see some of the, the production efficiency ones. So you'll either have like higher retention or you'll have growth and, and like you can switch them. So it's like you, you get a negative modifier for a positive. I've seen a few things like that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's Overall, it. it looks very good. Yeah, it does. So now let's transition to the international marketplace. So Arts of Iron 4 is adding a marketplace kind of like, I would say Monopoly, if you play Monopoly the real way, like there's an auction basically. Okay, and you can yeah. auction off stuff. Yeah. And uh, here's kind of what it looks like. So they took the, dis the diplomacy handshaking here and just yeah. added international marketplace because no one used that tab, which makes a lot of sense. And here's where you could buy and sell equipment. Yeah. Now, do you understand the economic capacity surplus? Like how that yeah. works, Pigeon? You're a numbers so, guy. Okay, so I have been doing a testing. Like, 
it might this might not be 100% correct, but this is my current understanding of it. When you sell something, you'll get uh, a consumer CIC, whatever it stands for. You get uh, a, essentially equivalent of production in terms of like your construction. And you can use that towards building new buildings up to 20% of like your, your current construction ability. Uh, so you can get a bonus from zero to 20%. And then after that, if you exceed that 20%, it'll go into this little surplus pool and that'll build up. And then if you you stop selling stuff, like that'll then pull from that pool. So you still get like the up to 20% bonus. So yeah, when you sell equipment, you you basically get consumer goods, it, but like in, in not necessarily in terms of like a factory, but in terms of like what a factory can produce. So it's kind of like money. But, you know, Hearts of Iron 4 doesn't have money. So, like, they're kind of, like, trying to make something that sort of reflects, like, what a country would pay for buying X amount of guns and then what that would mean for your economy. And, uh, yeah, so that's sort of how that works. Uh, and then it works the other way around where if you want to buy equipment, you're going to sign factories to it. I don't know if you have that uh, screen. Um, yeah, so you essentially, if you wanted to buy that, one of those trains, for example, you're going to sign a factory to to the, that purchase order or up to, I think, I think that's 15. I don't know if that's the actual limit, but you can sign as a certain amount of factories to it. And then that factory will then produce CIC like uh, industrial capacity. And then that will be used then to purchase those, those trains. And then if it co it's coming over land, it doesn't need convoys, but if it's coming over sea, you need convoys and it works sort of like you're trading for resources, but uh, in this case, you're getting equipment. Yeah, and this particular screen is what I got in 1936. I just wanted to check mm -hmm. out what's on the market in 36, and it was just yeah. trains and convoys. Trains, convoys. If you play a little bit longer, you'll see that like basic guns get on there pretty early. It's it's essentially if the AI has surplus, they'll sell it. They'll put it up for sale, and then uh, if you're like an allied power, so like you're probably playing as like US or something here, or no, maybe not. You're playing as one of the Certainly some country that's friendly to the allies, so maybe Sweden. This is Sweden, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you're, you're playing someone that uh, you know can can buy from them. Like if you're Germany, you your your options are a little bit more limited because like the U.S. doesn't sell to you. <laughs> um, and then same same thing if you're playing like a different country that like you know like Japan or Russia, you might have, have you might have different options too, right? So uh, and and that actually works in terms of like who buys your stuff too. So. Uh, I think the allies get a little bit of a bonus here because they've got just so many friends. So as a player, you may have more options because like right before war, Germany came to me and wanted to buy guns off of me. I, it was okay. right at like the Battle of France. I was super surprised. So it looks like the AI has the option to send that yeah. out to everyone and uh, see if so is, if they, they'll actually accept. <laughs> yeah, is that it was so that was at, at Sweden though, right? As Sweden, Germany approached yeah. me and wanted okay. to sell me, uh, wanted to buy my guns. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, yeah, like I can see that happening, but uh, you might not have, like, if you're playing Canada, Germany might not approach you. So, you know, it just, it depends, right? Like who your friends are, right? Like, uh, yeah. Have you done any of the, the selling at all or have you tried any of that? I did, and I didn't really notice a difference. I just sold off a little bit of guns because I'm yeah. like a, a gun hoarder. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I might need those one day. <laughs> like, I don't want to sell them away. I don't know if this is meta advice or anything, but I think a good practice might be to when you get your new fighters in, and as there's like the the interwars are coming out of your wings to sell those because you actually fetch a pretty good price for it. Like a hundred air wings can be the equivalent of like maybe a sieve. So like. Sorry, like 100 planes might be the equivalent of like around a sieve. So like, don't quote me on those numbers, but like it, it's kind of worth it. So if you've got like three, 400 planes that you built early or you had when when the game started, it might be worth to actually sell those off because like that's just sieves that you're you're wasting and you get up to a 20 percent like construction bonus. Right. So like, you know, why not use it? <laughs> No, absolutely. And like we they added the de delete button because people just wanted to delete yeah, those instead of, of just yep. like getting them shot down and losing yeah. manpower. So yeah. I, it makes a lot of sense, the marketplace. But yeah, I was thinking build the old school World War One guns and try selling yeah. those early because they come out super quick and yep. maybe someone will buy them. Yeah. So like I think the the, the price is like equivalent uh, or it's like based on how much it costs to produce them. And then, of course, the AI will probably want better stuff. So I don't know how 
how like uh con like intricate that actual process actually is so maybe maybe they'll keep buying guns one for forever but yeah i would just got to play more to figure out how these all these little things work right so oh don't you worry once we find those exploits they'll patch yeah, once right we find them. yeah <laughs> particularly uh the ones that Dankus shows yeah there you go okay this is I guess this is the example of when they reached out to me um, as playing as Sweden. German Reich wants to buy 194 of the VZ-24 infantry equipment. Not sure yeah. which variant that is. Amount of deliveries, two. So they come in batches, yeah. and it tells you when it's finished, and then you'll get, per delivery, 83 with a total of 166. So it's all right there for you. You can calculate yeah. everything out. So like, I think that's a really small order. Um, like that, it said that you got 166. I think a sieve is the equivalent, like it's like 9,000 or something, or maybe it's 10,000. So you're getting like the equivalent of like 1% of a, a sieve. So that was a really small order, uh, that, that particular one there. How dare um, you dash my dreams as Sweden? <laughs> uh, sell your fighters, sell your, they get, they fetch so much more right now. Yeah, they might not, patch it. They might patch it. Like maybe I found something, but they're telling not you, like, combat worthy. That's for sure. Yeah, when you get your good fighters, like instead of delete them, just sell them, man. Yeah, absolutely. Any other thoughts on the international marketplace before we move on to special forces? No, that's it for me. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward actually, but I'm sure programming yeah. is not. I, I'm sure it was very complicated to program, and I like. I don't know. I maybe I'm I'm interested in seeing how like the the community's take us on it. Like people might just be really upset that they were like changed lend leasing and that that's not an option anymore. Like it's not an early game option and yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It's a it's a new feature and it makes sense to me because it happened historically quite often. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Actually, one of the I'm going to diverge here for a second. One of the craziest things that happened was okay, one that was obvious was Germany sold guns to Ethiopia, but they are the World War I Mausers. Um, right. So that makes sense, right? It's like an 1800s gun, basically. Mm -hmm. Because Italy did not want to change cartridges from the, you know, whatever they had to the Carcano. Yeah. They sold their Carcanos to Finland, which was one of the best bolt action guns of World War II, if not the best. Right. Okay. So Finland was flushed with Carcanos after the war, apparently. Yeah, like, I mean, a lot of things happen like that, yeah. Check out Forgotten History. This is forgotten not a sponsor. History, right. <laughs> or Forgotten Weapons. Forgotten, forgotten weapons. weapons. Oh, okay, yeah, I've heard of Forgotten Weapons. Yeah, yeah I, when he was describing the Carcano, he explained the lend -lease. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to Special Forces here. Uh, do you want to go ahead and explain what's going on here? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, in your doctrines, you now have, uh, we have a fourth option. It looks like, um, so we, you, you have your, your mountaineers, your marines, and your paratroopers. Previously, these were all just researched, and you, would, you could research bonuses. They moved over to uh, doctrines, similar to the other ones. Uh, the mountaineers work on army XP. The marines work on naval XP. And paratroopers work on air XP. Uh, you have uh, various options, depending on what kind of marines you want to build what kind of mountaineers you want to build and paratroopers you want to build there's some new features with them uh like raiding so you can you can raid a, a coast coastal tile and come and move off if you build a certain type of marine uh same thing with paratroopers you can jump down and and destroy factories and um yeah so there's there there's more options if you get the 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 new dlc like i said those, those researches have been moved from the research tab the thing to to this so there's just the base like mountaineer uh, marines and paratrooper research and you can get like a little bit of org from that but there used to be another section below that uh and that's been removed for in exchange for this all right next i would like to show you what i thought was um just popped out after like looking at it for like five minutes with you and five minutes on my own just a few of the badges to to show the viewers what's going yep. on here so the first one I have here is down in the lower left-hand corner, blowtorch and corkscrew. Yeah. Do you want to tell us what's going on here? Uh, yeah. So, the, well, I mean, there's there's multiple things going on here. So I'll start at the bottom. So there's a short bombardment bonus. I guess that's uh might be slightly helpful, but I think the, the cap is still there. So it might be a moot point. Uh, but then obviously special forces attack plus 10%. That's great. 
the the top one though that's the one that i'm the most interested in uh i mentioned this yesterday like if you're gonna do a artillery only build after the dlc comes out uh, i think it's gonna be a lot easier with this because you you, you can actually get uh organization in with artillery and you can probably put a lot of artillery into your your battalions now like if you research marines like if you do in the united states you train your navy all game by 1940 you might be able to build like like not an exaggeration like a, a, a division that is like 50 percent artillery because you'll actually get org out of it uh <laughs> I haven't right. taken it to the extreme, but like, there's going to be some meme stuff coming out of this this particular one here. They're going to be like laser beams. They're going to be space artillery yeah. machines from like Star Wars or something. Yeah, because like, when you stack in artillery, you lose a lot of org. And you lose, uh, and that's just like such a big problem, right? And so it's what really limited people. But it's you know, <laughs> we're going to see more artillery. <laughs> some some crazy builds, I think. Oh, it's going to be a lot of fun. The next one I have up here is the Rough Terrain Specialist. Yeah. And uh, you add Rangers to your support companies, correct? Yeah. So you would get that bonus, I think, below. Uh, oh, no, sorry. It's the effect is on the Rangers themselves. So there, there's two options for the Rangers uh, that, that split above there. So you can get a Ranger, but it like one has movement bonus and one other has a I think weather bonus or like a modifier. Uh, so the rangers replace recon, so you can put them in in your in your your divisions as a support company and get different modifiers. Like this here would make mountaineers particularly like you know an extra twenty percent attack. That's not not nothing to scoff at, right? <laughs> Absolutely, it does make uh, mountaineers pretty op. That's why I put it up, yeah. and then it's the second badge, so it's really easy to get to. Yeah. And then what I'm confused about pigeon is I know you just explained that, but um, the recon, it replaces your regular recon because this badge right here, it's very small, but it is the recon support yeah. company. I'm pretty sure, it okay, maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. I'd have to double check, but uh, I think when you put the Rangers in, you don't have an option for recon. Uh, and then the Pioneers replace your, your, uh, your engineer company. So it's just yeah. one or the other, maybe. Yeah, you have an option, either or. or so your, your regular recon. them. What's that? Maybe it kind of upgrades them. Yeah, it is. It's like it's new, a new thing. It's a new option. If you've uh, like, if you, if you pull up the game, you can you can see like it is an actual additional thing. So like you know, like how you have your cav recon, you have your armored car recon. You'll also have rangers. You select rangers, all those options go away. Gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, the next one that I'm going to go over is the mountain artillery. Let me make this a little bigger. Yeah, no good breakthrough numbers there. Okay, so this is kind of at the top, if I remember correctly, but below the the last yeah. one that I showed. And what are you seeing here? Okay, so if you were to add this, uh, you get this effect. All all it, so it actually shows you there the different modifiers. So it's like your your mountaineers will give you you get fifteen percent breakthrough on just like the mountaineer infantry, and then you get twenty percent soft attack on the line artillery in the battalions. And then the so, way this is broken out, does it just upgrade the support artillery and the support recon companies to this effect? No, there. I don't think they're... I'm not entirely sure. I think it just applies it to the battalions as like a research bonus. So it'd be like the equivalent of like researching like, a, you know, support and weapons like in, in your research tab, how you get the 5%. I think that's how it counts. And then it's just like a global modifier on those all mountaineers and line material... Line artillery, which if that's line artillery just in general, like you want to maybe research your your mountain artillery or like your your mountaineers, you want to get down there because that's twenty percent. I'd have to like double check. I'd have to look into it to make sure that that's exactly how it works. But I'm pretty sure that's how it works. <laughs> well, it is a little curious because this has a blue plus next to the artillery piece here, but this has mm -hmm. uh, binoculars, but a green like green star to the right of it. So it's definitely yeah. different. So I'm thinking like, yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Okay, so the next, anything else you want to talk about in terms of special forces? Yeah, I, again, it comes down to like, I want to see how people use it, but there is a, I think there's a one for the Marines where they can actually depart from a tile without having a port. 
So you can do like little raids. I want to see how that works in action. I think that might have like some pretty big impacts. Like people, like particularly in multiplayer games where people want to do D Day, but everyone's like, oh, we got to be ready or whatever. Like maybe doing like a, a much smaller raid on the on the coast just to like kind of probe the attack maybe to like get germany's attention because you can land your marines and then if they like the tanks are coming you can just scoot away right like without getting the port <laughs> does it do uh, what yeah. paras do where you just prairie dog them in and then they take out a yeah. sieve and then get them out yeah you could do that like especially if you get enough vps in a state you can you can sabotage the infrastructure like if your rules allow for it you could uh, technically you could delete factories i don't know if uh you know, sometimes these things are banned, right? So, you know, because it's a little exploity, but uh, yeah, like you could do things like that. Particularly the paradrop, uh, the paratrooper branch, I did see once you get them in there, it does destroy um, yeah. infrastructure so, and factories on some yeah. of them. So like one of the sides, it's an option. So you can you can either get paratroopers that like uh, do more damage to units or they do more damage to factories. So you can have a paratrooper now that actually lands on a unit and we'll do like a percentage damage. So like there's some there's some meme strats you might be able to get into. Well, that's why um, I didn't show the paratrooper branch. I don't want to go there. <laughs> I was just like, uh, Paris. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, right? The next segment of the podcast will now be about mis miscellaneous quality of life improvements, base game changes uh, that most of them work pretty globally, if I'm not mistaken. So let's let's dive into them. So you'll get this even without the DLC. And then yep. the one I think you won't get is the super heavy tank. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I haven't actually seen the super heavy tank support company. Are they actually doing that or? Uh, yes, it is. I tested okay. it out today. It is in the okay. game. And it it does not say under the research screen, but it just basically um, okay. It does add a, an option in your support company. Yeah, it will become okay. available to you once you research super heavy. So we'll get to that. That might be a bug to report that that it doesn't show it. I don't know if they know already. They'd have to just change the artwork on the super the, heavy tank research. Um, so yeah, like the description. Yeah. There actually is a lot of artwork missing, so I think they're still in the process of adding it in. Yeah. I have a feeling like most of that'll be in the game. Yeah, we're we're seeing something a little bit earlier. So okay. the first thing that I noticed here that was a huge quality of life change is I think you could just shift left click and this will take things to the bottom. So you can drag, but then you can use the arrows to move your production lines around. Okay, um, that's so, new. Uh, this arrow right here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like that's been in the game, but maybe I'm going crazy. <laughs> Um, I'm 100% sure that okay, I've never yeah. seen this before. Okay, and you yeah. see the green arrow to move it up? Yep. Yeah, that's up new. Down. I think I saw it on a dev diary as well. Okay, okay, yeah. It's just a sudden, guys, don't get down on us, but it's such a complex game. I could say this time and time again, like I'll talk to Pigeon or I talk to Spider or whoever, and all of a sudden, like they taught me something new and it's like very, very complex game. But that's why I try to boil it down for you guys, you know, so yeah. watch watch my channel and Pigeon's channel because he he does a good job of boiling it down too. The next thing we talked about a little earlier, but can you identify what type of focuses these are? Yeah, it's a little bit small on my screen, um... but it's small in the game too. <laughs> so when you're looking at your focus tree, it usually kind of looks like this. But if you oh look... yeah, so th this is the the Nordic League stuff, like the joint focus tree. I actually don't understand too much how this works, like. Um... Is it the leader of the faction has the option to research these? It is anyone in the faction as far as I, I looked at it, okay. but I'm not playing multiplayer. Yeah. And um, this is the joint focuses. And as I said before, it is not quite clear, but on the lower part of the text down below each badge, there are three stars on either side. Okay. And I thought it was going to be like more eye popping, like gold or something. Um, but they kind of made it uh, a darker color. And I didn't notice it until like an hour into my gameplay that this yeah. is joint. So as you go through this, I think if Sweden, this is a Swedish focus tree, gets the top badge all of a sudden and everyone's in the same faction, everyone else is going to be able to research these. Some okay. of them give global bonuses to everyone in the faction, some of these badges. Yeah. Others are only the nation that does the focus. Focus, right. So as you go through here, um, and it definitely adds a lot of depth to the game, but basically you have to sit there and strategize with your uh, friends. Yep. Who's going to take this focus or who's going to actually do the focus for everyone's benefit? Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Like, I'd like actually like to play a game with the uh, the Nordic League. Are we right, though? Do it doesn't. Are we going to do it again? If you guys aren't aware, we had been playing games simulating the Nordic League. Yeah. <laughs> now we can do it with a, a proper focus tree. Well, I'm hoping to get everyone back so that we could live stream that again, because that was a lot of fun. And we know yeah. the region now, kind of. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this is just what I said before, just to show you that um, right. this is shared by everyone. Economic Union... Any allied country is part of it. You just need stability. Okay. Another change that was made to get to these support companies, you need yep. to research. I believe it's the second level of truck. See the rocket there? Yeah. Uh, so there is two trucks now. There's an early truck and then the, the regular truck. You always had to have trucks in order to get the like the field hospitals and that. Um, but now, like sometimes some countries don't actually have the the second motorized. So there's a there's a cheaper I don't actually don't think it's cheaper. I think it's the same cost, but there's a, a less good truck now that people can like countries can build. No, absolutely. And Sweden yeah. doesn't start with the upgraded truck. The so you have yeah. to get that to get the rest. So it's going to be a little harder to get your logic companies there for your tanks. Yeah, that's just it's one more thing to research. It's on the way to mechanized. Germany's not going to have a problem. No, I'm not worried about Germany. Take a guess at what I'm showing here. Do you see anything different from the old maps? Ah, uh, there's different VPs, isn't there? Yes. Like the, yeah, they're highlighted. I don't remember ever seeing Regensburg. Yeah. Sorry for my um, German. is not good. I'm not entirely sure if I saw Oppen to the far right there or... Yeah. So you would have to zoom in previously like a lot closer to get to like Weimar and Kessel and things like that. So I think now they're just kind of showing it a little bit further out. Like they're showing that tier of VPs. One thing I wish they would kind of add that they, they haven't is I wish they did add I wish they would add the the support uh, supply hubs as like a, just a marker that you can see at, at, on your infantry level sort of at that zoom. Like even if it was a toggleable option, because like in Spain, there's like a, a supply hub next to Salamanca, but it's like it's not in the city. So you have to like open up your supply map to look and then until like you memorize where all the, the supply hubs are, um, you know, it's like, oh, I need to get get the supply hub near this. Right. Like, you know, it, it creates a lot of confusion. But if you you could see it, it would be, you know, be a little bit nicer. Yeah, that's a good one, because I just go by memory a lot of the times yeah in my playthroughs like yeah there's a supply pub over here yeah <laughs> sometimes they're not on the cities like they'll be right next to a city and it's like why <laughs> why guys <laughs> i'm sure there was balance reasons or something but like i don't know i'd like to be able to see them so with the increased amount of vps what i get from that is you need to take out more of the country Snaking i don't think it's actually are they are they changing the VP VP's numbers? I, I think the know. VP the numbers are the same. It's just that they're showing like the the lower level ones at a, a, a further zoom rate. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, that's interesting. So, so they yeah, the quantity of VP locations has not increased. Okay, yeah, correct. So like nothing game gameplay wise will actually change. It's just that you'll be able to see them now, uh, like unless like no, like normally. Like in 1.12, you would have to zoom in all the way to like the furthest level to see the smaller ones. Now you can kind of be at medium zoom to see them. Yeah. Well, that's cool. It'll make the a richer gameplay experience more immersive. Yeah. <laughs> all right, here is so you can't see it, but there's a super heavy tank there. But I had to hover over this to get okay. you the stats here. And yeah, I guess yeah. it's the fourth one there. That's yeah. It is support. Uh, just like we said, I had to play for a long time to, to yeah. get here, but we got there. There's all the stats for you guys. So here's my my biggest comment about the super heavy tanks. Like, okay, so they do add a bit of piercing. Not much armor. Oh, I guess you're you've got a you, this is on a tank company already. But the production cost is the big issue for me. Like it that's four three thousand four hundred and sixty five IC. That's that's so expensive. And what do you get in benefit? Like, like that's a lot of heart attack. Like 300 heart attacks a lot. I'll, I'll admit that. But and you know, 400 breakthrough, great. But that's you're probably doubling the cost of this. 
or like at least 50 percent more on this tank for that support company so oh this is a hundred percent glam just the research is alone. it glam yeah. oh yeah this is glam and um let me tell you when i popped this in here i was looking at the heart attack and the breakthrough and i was like yeah. it was some. Um, it was in the thousand i think it was somewhere in the like mid thousands like 1500 a piece oh, i believe it it's just that's so expensive <laughs> To get there, you know, by then you lose the war. <laughs> yeah, but like if, if you're researching these to win the game, it's a little late, bud. Because you get that research in set, uh, what forty one, like just to research it. So you're not even building it. Like it's a it's a late game thing for sure. I think you could pr you could get it by forty one. Yeah, I think you're correct. I think that's like the date. Like I mean, I'm sure you could research it in forty with a little bit of a penalty, but. Um, yeah. You could get to heavy tank two by what late thirty eight. Yeah, yeah, it should be, probably sooner. Yeah. Should be doable. It's just uh, <laughs> it's costly. Moving on from the the memes here, we're gonna transition into the Swedish corner just okay. to give you a little flavor of you know what's going on with uh, some of the new countries here, so you can get a, a feel for some of the advisors. Uh, the first thing I wanted to show you, just flipping through advisors here, got a. Uh, spy yep and you can see the civilian intelligence plus 20 percent you get the operative slot like the yep. the usual spy guys do agency upgrade time though is negative 20 percent. yeah that that's good 20 percent is good and you, and you get stability on that guy that's that's a good pick and swing does need a lot of stability because um spoiler alert there's gonna be strikes and you right. need a high civ count high stability count, and then I believe it transitions into war support to avoid the strikes. So it kind of keeps you on task as you're going down your focus tree. Right, right. Next one is going to be the Swedish financial expert here, Consumer Good Factories, negative factor. 15%. I should point out to like the folks at home that that's not the same as 15% in the previous version. So that 15% will be of your your requirement uh, after the the base calculation. So consumer goods are changing like quite a bit. You could probably see that as maybe the equivalent of like negative three percent of of the old thing. Uh, the new new calculation now is it's done in such a way that you're never going to hit zero. So you'll always have some consumer good cost. An early negative fifty percent might be the equivalent of like three or five percent of the the old version. I think when I click this for Sweden. Um, it was like three or four sieves, so it was yeah. significant. Of like a, a maybe a hundred was it or? Um, the sieves, their sieve count early is only like twelve, but oh. they're on civilian economy, so I think it's more yeah. impactful. And so it is more impactful because what it is is it's it reduces fifteen percent of your cost after the like your economy law calculation. So if you have a high cost because of sieves, it's more impactful, like that thing there. Whereas, like, once you're on total mob or, or, or uh, you know, war economy, even that 15% is going to be lower. Yeah. So you know. And when I talked to the head lead game developer, Peter, he had alluded to the fact that he wanted to modify this, but it yeah. seemed like uh, it's very, fairly impactful early, but then it sounds like it falls off big time yeah. later. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much exactly it. Yeah. We have, let's see here, the Minister of Justice, political power gain 10%. Resistance nice. target negative five. So if you invade a country as Sweden, yeah, you can you get go. a little bit less resistance. I, I'm not going to be scoffing at political power gain because we you really need it now with all that MIO stuff. Like getting that PP. Like you know, some countries don't have a lot. Like sometimes your base is like you know, it's like one, and then you have negative modifiers on that. So it's like you know, you, like after you're done your sorry, it's like one after you're researching your focus, right? So you know, you can be coming out with like 0.3 a day just because you're doing a couple of researches or something. It's 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 pretty awful. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. You got to pick your yeah. MIOs very carefully. Yeah. Next one we have here is Minister nice. of Education. Research speed, 6%. Eh, kind of underwhelming. I didn't choose him. That's 6% is pretty good. Pretty and good. There's, they, have focus, er, er, they have focuses that will give you more than that. It's pretty crazy. Okay, yeah. Like if you stack them. Okay, this one's spicy. Ooh. So this guy, Ricard Sandler, is going to let you Sweden yeah. send troops to the Spanish Civil War. Tested it, it works. Yeah. So you can send three divisions to the Spanish Civil War. Pretty nice. crazy. 
I'm looking at that plus eight percent against major countries. Ooh. And look at this. It increases the cost of yeah, plus eight percent attack and defense for major countries at the very top there. But you also have like what is this? The the cross we bear organization losses more? Plus three percent. Maybe that's for, for another for it's your in green, so it's gotta be yeah, a why bonus. Is it? I wonder how that works. Maybe that's it might be a typo. Maybe it should be red or it should be negative. Could be a typo. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this early and it could be a typo. Yeah. Um, yeah, special modifier, uh, capacity modifier, that 1% is going to be, it's like 1% of your total. So if you have 100 divisions, that's an extra division. And then coordination is okay. I mean, 2% early on is pretty good for like uh, your attack. I mean, once you start getting radar, you're actually going to get a higher coordination value. So, And then when you l lose him, it just removes it. Okay. We don't lose him. So you, if you fire him, you lose that ability. You lose that uh, modification of the national spirit, the cross we bear. It looks like. Gotcha. Yeah. And then the usual division requirement is thirty. So now it's going to be fifteen for Sweden because it was negative fifty percent there. Fifteen okay. divisions to yeah. send three. Oh, okay. Not yeah. bad. And you can get fifteen divisions as Sweden. That's not. I did it today. Yeah, there you <laughs> I go. Can do it. You could do it. <laughs> yeah, there you go, bud. All right, we got an artillery expert. Nice. As like you'd it. expect, it's 15% attack, 10% defense. I think they're typically, like, there's some geniuses that are 15-15. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the vanilla artillery expert, though. I can't remember now. I don't, I don't want to be misquoted, so... <laughs> well, because of the yeah. special forces that you alluded to that gain... They actually gain organization. Yeah. Um, maybe they nerf that defense, but the main thing is you can have more of a soft attack bonus to line artillery because there's not going to be that many battalions in your division yeah. uh, because they don't have organization. So you're not going to be able to continue to that attack, even though you're going to be dealing 15% more soft attack, which sounds amazing. But if your organization, if you're not able to keep your organization up, the attack is going to fa fall off. Yeah. So if anything, it's just like you can stack more more artillery then, right? Yeah. Like you can get that you, extra org, you can get more, and then you stack the modifier. The the corkscrew marines or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this one was just interesting. It got a bunch of bonuses. It's an industrial MIO. Um, yeah. I haven't clicked on it yet to see if you could apply this to your industrial research, but I suspect that you might be able to. Mm. It, it doesn't have the same badges, though, so maybe not. But you get a reinforce rate of 2%, and what is uh, radios like 5? Yeah. Don't I mean, like 2%, it's not, it's not like, it's not that it's golf at. Like, it's nice to get more reinforcement rate. Early, early coordination's good. Early game, like, sometimes your units are just, like, all over the place when it comes to their, their attacks. They're very spread out, so having a little bit of early coordination is pretty good. And then, obviously, your research uh, bonuses there are pretty nice. Yeah, definitely uh, an odd one. I haven't seen one like this before that actually buffs yeah. combat stats, so that was interesting. Oh, that yeah, that's a good point, yeah. That's probably unique to, like, Sweden or whatever new ones they put in. Absolutely, yeah. so I'll be looking out for more of those. Yeah, there you go. Okay, this is the ball bearing, like, kind of mini game that you can play. It's actually, uh, with Sweden, it's fairly, it's fairly beneficial. But okay. basically, you give ball bearings to, like, places like Germany, Russia, France. I did have China decline this, and you have to spend 30 political power to get it. But it is a way to get 50, I think it's 15 manpower a, a week as Sweden. And your main okay. limitation is with manpower. So if you get on these ball bearing trades early, you could get that manpower the other uh bonuses you guys can just look at but i think the manpower is the big thing here hmm. the other thing is um this is what i was telling you before the swedish riots yeah. surprised me quite a bit you need like 40 sieves yeah it's right there uh we need 40 sieves to get past the first wave of riots and then it's going to be stability and then i think war support so you got to be good in all those different categories so when you start playing as sweden make sure you get your 40 sieves yeah and with all the bonuses that you get like it's not hard to get to all right and we're gonna wrap up here with sweden can now join the winter war or they could before through focus yeah they could it, uh, through events i think Oh, yeah, that was events. Yeah. That's correct. Well, now you can do it through focus and you get buffs for 180 days. So what That's I want to cool. do with you is I'll play Sweden, you play Finland and we hold, baby. <laughs>
We got to hold the winter war. <laughs> yeah, we can do. We can try that. Yeah. Like, I don't know how good uh, I haven't seen too much into Finland, but like, I assume if you stack all the the benefits with uh, Finland, there's like probably some way to get it so you can hold out indefinitely. I know it was pretty hard with the the vanilla system, but I, I, it's got to be easier now, right? Mannerheim, baby. There you, you just go. get Mannerheim <laughs> and stack all those defensive yeah. bonuses. We're a wall. Get those Rangers in with the, the snow bonuses. Yeah, just dip in there. Yeah. You could dip in it. I think the, the snow bonuses are like the second uh, yeah. Ranger Battalion you can get or whatever, the uh, second SF that you can get on yeah. your army. It's pretty easy. So that's going to wrap it up here for this review of the Arms Against Tyranny DLC. Uh, we're going to be coming out with more videos. Go ahead and check out Pigeon's channel. Thank you. You enlightened me quite a bit in regards to... Uh, all these new bonuses and buffs and everything going on. You're really good with the numbers and that spreadsheet that you had was awesome yeah. about the combat widths, man. I, I see. I need stuff like that. I need to like look, go through the numbers because otherwise I, I, I don't understand it. Someone just tells me like, oh, just do this and you'll get this. And like, I, I just got to see how it how it actually works out. So, uh, yeah, no worries. Um, I did send you some other things like in terms of like the, the actual value values, like in the defines and that for like the reinforcement valid like i just don't know what the equation is so i um i can't really quote like saying like definitely don't build this because you'll get this modifier we couldn't be more polar opposite in terms of yeah. play style because i just go rush in there but you want to think about like the uh the numbers and the stats and stuff like that um yeah. because you're good at that that's way beyond me i could never do that i mean so what happened was uh, a big thing I, I was I was just testing out some of the combat and seeing if like the Danish Straits how they worked now, and if they like fixed that stuff there because it was previously broken. And then I noticed that I had such a negative modifier, and I'm like, "But I'm using 21 width. What's going on?" And then there was no information whatsoever that they had changed any of the combat width. Like I don't even think people are talking about it like at all at the time of this recording. So it's it's going to be big news if it's the numbers that they're showing. So. Uh, oh, I, I yeah. knew about it because you're right, though. It was not heavily publicized. I believe yeah. it was just a line item, like a sentence in a dev diary. Okay. But I, I they, did see it. They did talk about like maybe changing it in the um, the summer beta, but the summer beta numbers were completely different. Like they were they were they went in the other direction. They were a lot more like uh, complicated, but I think the the debuffs were lower. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me, and uh, hopefully we can play sometime. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think we've uh, we've got some stuff to, uh, coming up here pretty soon. All right, uh, and uh, it was it was good to be on the first uh, podcast with your um, without the mask. Yeah, thank you very much. I got the the mask right here. Yeah. Now you can see my facial expressions. expressions. Yeah. I'm just a, I'm really shy. The mask is meaningless. It's just to cover my face up and it's <laughs> camouflage because this is a war game. That's oh, there all. You go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for having me. All right, guys. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.